Hey guys, it's Michelle here. Um, we're on week two of Staying Home with Stokes. I hope everyone is staying happy and healthy out there. Glad you could join me today. Um, so you will find all of today's activities linked on our website at logannature.org, as well as on our Facebook page, Staying Home with Stokes. And if you're still working on our birds from last week, those activities are all still up as well. Um, so I hope you guys have had um, a chance to start getting outside and looking for some insects this week. So our theme this week is insects. So I'm going to talk just very briefly um, about insects and explain some of the activities you'll find in the folder for this week. Um, so I did bring a couple artifacts from the Nature Center. Um, just think about all the many different kinds of insects you find and what you're finding outside. Um, so insects, they may be um, something we don't necessarily like, like mosquitoes and things that we maybe just consider a pest. Um, they might be something that's really beautiful to look at, like these butterflies. So these are some South American species of butterflies. We've also got lots of beautiful butterflies right here in Cache Valley. Um, you may just be finding some evidence of insects, so maybe some nests, maybe some ant hills. Maybe you've seen something like this. So this is a wasp nest. So wasps are an insect that have insect that have a really strong mandible, so not mouth part. They're able to chew um, through wood, kind of make a pulp out of that. Um, by mixing it with their saliva, their spit, and they make these kind of gray, papery looking nests that you'll see. Alright, so today I'm going to talk very briefly um, about two ways that insects um, are going to avoid predators. So there's a lot of predators out there for insects, bats, birds, frogs, all sorts of things that will eat insects, even people. Um, so we're going to talk about um, disguise and mimicry. So we'll start off with insects that disguise themselves. So if you can think, I should think of any insects that maybe you've uh, found, um, but they were really well disguised, maybe they didn't look like an insect. So some examples of those. The first one everyone probably thinks of would be like a walking stick insect. So insects that disguise themselves or other animals, they're just trying to look like a non-food item, something that a predator would want to eat. So even if the predator sees them, they're probably just going to go on. Or it just helps them camouflage really well. So this it's a walking insect. Looks just like a stick. And it's really hard for us to spot and see them. So another one with the same idea. This is a Katy did leaf insect. Um, so the Katy did leaf insect, you can see it looks just like a leaf. And so that same idea, a predator probably that a predator that likes to eat insect, insects, excuse me, um, probably doesn't want to eat leaves. And it also just blends and camouflages in really well. So keep thinking about um, animals and that disguise themselves, in particular insects. We do have an activity um, for you to try and disguise your own insect. Um, the other thing we're going to talk about is mimicry. So mimicry um, is when an animal um, tries to mimic or copycat another animal. So oftentimes, that animal might be more dangerous than themselves. So if we look at like this owl butterfly, this butterfly is actually harmless, all right? It can't hurt you. But if you're a predator and you see what look like owl eyes staring back at you, that might scare you off and you might not want to eat that. So when an insect or another animal mimics um, an animal that is more dangerous than itself, we call that Batesian mimicry. So another form of Batesian mimicry would be um, this bee fly. So this looks like a little bumblebee. This is actually a fly, not a bee. But because this fly looks like a bee, it's gonna have less predators. Because bees, because they have stingers and can sting, they're a little bit better protected than this fly. All right, another form of mimicry um, called Mullerian mimicry. So that might be something like this. So you guys probably recognize these and think monarch. So the top picture is a monarch. The bottom picture is a viceroy, and viceroy butterflies look an awful lot like monarchs. 
they've just got, you'll be able to look at these pictures if you look in the file a little bit closer, but the viceroys have a stripe down the bottom of their wing that the monarchs don't have. And they're a little bit smaller. So these guys actually both are dangerous because of their diets. Um, they produce kind of some toxins that are just not very tasty for birds and frogs. Um, so they are actually just helping each other out because both of them are unpalatable, unpalatable or untasty. And when an, a bird or a predator eats these guys, he's not going to want to eat the other one. He's going to remember that word coloration. So if we think of a bird, maybe catches a monarch, doesn't like it, doesn't taste good, doesn't make him feel good. The next time he sees maybe a viceroy because of that same colors, he's going to remember when he ate that monarch and he didn't like it. So they're just helping each other out because they both look the same um, and that predator is not going to want to eat either one of them. All right, so just a really quick introduction to animal mimicry um, and disguise. Um, you can explore, there's lots of animals besides insects that do the same thing, so you'll find that all across the animal kingdom. Um, so we're going to explore some of the other activities and just briefly tell you um, what's in the folder for today. Um, so first thing you may see is just um, a blank worksheet with a blank butterfly outline on it. Um, so you're going to take this butterfly and color in so that it mimics another animal. So like the owl butterfly that we saw. Um, so my butterfly, I was trying to mimic tiger salamanders that have kind of these bright yellow stripes. And tiger salamanders just like our monarch butterflies. Um, they're not very tasty. They have some toxins in them. Um, the predators oftentimes don't like to eat them. So hopefully if there's a butterfly that looks like a tiger salamander, then predators won't want to eat it. Um, the next thing you'll see is a paper with just a blank outline of a beetle. So going from mimicry to disguise. So for this one, you can cut it out or you can leave it right on your paper. And you're going to go outside and try and find some natural items that you can disguise your beetle with. So it be leaves, it could be sticks, rocks, um, grasses, whatever you can find. Um, so maybe think about where you want your beetle to live and what would be most helpful to disguise your beetle. And then just get some glue out and go ahead and disguise your beetle. So mine, I found some leaves. My beetle might look just like part of a shrub hanging out in my garden. You'll also find an insect parts worksheet. So this is great for kindergartners or about second grade. Um, if you can go out in your backyard and maybe find some real insects and try and identify these parts. Um, so you'll be able to identify the head, the thorax, the abdomen, um, the antennae that give them a really great sense of smell. Those mandibles like we talked about with the wasp that's able to chew through wood. Um, and of course, as you all probably remember, insects have six legs um, versus our spiders that have eight. All right, so you'll also find a few other links. Um, so one is to make seed bombs. Um, so um, insects, a lot of them are pollinators. Um, pollinators are responsible for over 30% of our food. Um, so they're diving in those flowers, um, getting that pollen and carrying it from flower to flower. Um, which helps those plants to grow and in turn provides us with a lot of our food. Um, so you can make seed bombs or just get out and plant um, some pollinator friendly flowers, native flowers. Um, but there's a little YouTube video to show you how to make some seed bombs. So you just need some clay, um, some seeds, and a little bit of soil. Um, you can make these, these little clay balls, uh, throw them out on your ditch banks, your garden, wherever you want to see some flowers pop up. Um, Bugs for Breakfast um, links to a, a great um, video by the California Academy of Sciences. So it's talking about how environmentally friendly it is actually to eat um, bugs as a protein source and exploring some of the cultures that do that. Um, so it's a great watch for everyone and then they've got some expanded activities that would be great for more of the middle school range. So if you've got kids that are probably in about 6th through ninth grade, um, that's a great resource for them to explore. If you're looking for a great art project on kind of a warm day, um, Flies Water Painting, there's a link to check that out. So you just need a big sheet of paper, butcher paper, or poster board, um, draw a large outline of an insect on it. Um, then take some clean Flies Water, some washable paint, and you'll use that to paint in your insect. It's paint your insect. Um, it's really pretty and a lot of fun, especially for littles. Um, and then just get out and keep using that iNaturalist app, so keep exploring. 
Um, we will be on Facebook Live for Nature Tales again this week, and we'll be doing a little bit more with insects there. Um, so stay tuned for more with Staying Home with Stokes, and I hope to see you next week. Bye.